What's up everyone? It is Charmise here and once again, welcome back to my channel. So if you've watched my previous videos, you guys will know that I recently passed up one and I wanted to just make a quick video about how I studied for step one and what I did to pass step one and some tips that you guys can use to help you in your dedicated studying period as well. So the first thing that I used to study for step one was Boards and Beyond. Boards and Beyond gathered me together. I, I feel like by the end of my second year, like my brain was just so scattered and overload, overloaded and Boards and Beyond was what really helped me get everything straight and it helped me with my learning and my understanding and i also used the light year boards and beyond anki deck to just make sure that i was retaining all of the information that i was learning so boards and beyond was definitely my number one resource um like seriously you can go through like you can watch a boards and beyond video and if you do like you world questions on that topic it gets to the like little details that dr ryan stressed so yeah, Boards and Beyond was like number one in my book. The second resource that I used for step studying was Sketchy Farm. So Sketchy Farm, I don't know, it's not for everyone. Um, it definitely helped me, like some, some sketches were more helpful than others, but I would say like it, it was a good starting point for me, but doing questions, like doing farm questions, after watching the sketchy videos is what really helped me retain the different medications that we need to know for the exam. So Sketchy Farm is a good resource. I know people who swear by it. I would say that I'm like, I like it, but I wouldn't say that it was like the only thing that helped me learn pharmacology ever. So yeah, that was that's my second resource that I used. My third resource would be first aid. Now, I did not read the whole first aid book. I know some people who read first aid cover to cover. They take out like actual time out of their day to read first aid. I did not do that. I used the first aid 2020 rapid review Aki deck and I hit that up every single day and I matured all of the cards and I swear to you like I knew first aid. <laughs> I knew first aid after that. So that's what I did for first aid. But first aid itself is um a resource that I used every single day because as you do questions you need something to refer to and it was like my number one reference tool and so I would go through first aid and annotate it that way but as for reading it cover to cover I'm just not that kind of girl. Dirty medicine is such a great resource for people who for like those topics that you just can't retain like I could never get straight what the like hepatitis B window period look like and it wasn't until I watched first I watched Dirty Medicine and I was like oh duh like and it stuck with me um or their videos on like the dyslipidemias like I could never get those straight but after watching Dirty Medicine and like learning those mnemonics I was just like I had it I had it in my brain I could never forget it so Dirty Medicine is actually really good and it's free so when I use it it's on YouTube Every medical student that I know loves dirty medicine. So for my question banks, I used UWorld and I used USMLERX. So UWorld obviously is a gold standard. Everyone knows UWorld. I got through 100% of UWorld and I did some wrongs. I didn't do a lot of wrongs really, but um, I got through some wrongs, but UWorld was definitely my top. But um, if you watch my, pre my previous videos, you know that I had to retake my cumulative exam. And when I was studying for my cumulative exam and also step one, I was using USMLE RX. So I like USMLE RX because it was founded, it was created by the same person who wrote first aid and like came up with first aid. Like I forget his name, but he's like the first author on first aid. As you go through US Emily RX like explanations, you'll see that it's a good way to also go through first aid and learn from first aid. And then I also obviously used my NBME practice exams. I did the offline ones and I also did the on wait. I did the online ones and then I also like did some old ones. Obviously you can use them as a learning tool, they're just extra questions. But it also gives you an opportunity to like kind of simulate the exam and see like where you stand and if you're ready to take step one. 
my normal day-to-day -day schedule, I would wake up around 6 a.m. Around 6.30, 6.45, I would start on my Anki. I'd do that for like an hour and a half to maybe two hours. And then around eight o'clock, I would start U-World. So I did like anywhere from two to three U-World blocks a day. So I would do that until maybe, so I would do U-World and review the questions. So maybe about like 12 or one. And then, and the rest of my day would be spent on content review. So I would watch videos, I would annotate my notes that I used from my wrong, from UWorld and the NVMEs, um, anything really. And my day would, sometimes my days would end early around like 8 p.m. Sometimes I would, I wouldn't finish studying until around 10 p.m. So it really just varied, but usually my days were from like 6.30 in the morning to 10 p.m. So some tips, actually my therapist gave me for test day because she works with my school and she works with a lot of students who are studying for either step one, step two, or step three. She gave me some really helpful tips for test day. So the first one was um, to do the free 120 at the actual site that you will be taking step one. That made all the difference for me. Like I was able to learn the route of where I was going before test day, where I was gonna park, it felt like I was taking an actual exam. I went through all of the procedures. So that was really helpful. But it's something that I actually recommend for people who are going to take step one. The second thing was to drink electrolyte water. The exam is very long and you can get easily dehydrated. So if you just sip on electrolyte water um, during your breaks, then you won't get as dehydrated and tired. The other thing is to take breaks. So I took at least a five minute break after every single block. I know some people who did like all their, like three blocks, two, three blocks at a time. I didn't do that. I took my breaks. I had time. So, you know, it was it was really helpful because I was not stressed out at, at all during the exam. Like I was so calm during the exam. The other thing that she recommended to me was something called Neurogum. It really helps with focus. I have it, hold on. So this is Neurogum. Um, I think you can get it on Amazon, but if not, you can get it from like the actual website. And you only need to chew it for like five minutes. You can chew it for longer. I did just for like a comforting kind of feeling, but you can chew it for only for just five minutes and it will like help you with energy and focus for I think about an hour or something like that. But I really liked it. And I think that it helped me definitely with studying and then like, on the actual test day, I was just so used to like chewing my gum and like doing questions that it just like, it felt like it was like helping me throughout the exam. And the last two tips that she gave me actually had to do with food. So she said that um, during your test day, you wanna eat, like if you have like snacks or food with you, you wanna eat things that are, that are nutritious and light so that your body is like, not focusing on adjusting the food, and it's focusing more on helping your brain function throughout the exam. And then she also told me to take my caffeine or sugar during the last two or three blocks, not any earlier, because then I would crash. As you know, step one is seven blocks long, an hour each, it's easy to crash. So that's exactly what I did. I had my little cookie, I had it, <laughs> I had it before my last two blocks, and it definitely got me through right at the point where I was started to feel like, oh my gosh, like I'm getting tired. That's what got me through. And finally, I'll just talk about my scores. I know that a lot of people don't like to share their scores, but I'm gonna do that today. So for NBME 25, I had uh, I got a 57.5%. Um, I don't know what like the passing chance was because I took it offline. NBME's NBME 26, I got a 60% with an 87% chance of passing. NBME 27, I got a 62% with a 90% chance of passing. NBME 28, I got a 64% with a 90, it was a 90 something percent chance of passing. NBME 29, I got a 62% with a 90% chance of passing. And then NBME 30, I got a 70% with a 97% chance of passing. On my old free 120, I got a 77%. And on my new free 120, I got a 66%. And then on step one, I passed. So yeah, those are the things that I did to help me pass step. The tips that I have for you guys, um, the resources that I used. Um, 
So yeah, again, I took five weeks of dedicated for step, but I also had eight weeks before that when I was studying for my cumulative exam, but also having step on my mind. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, please feel free to reach out to me. You can message me, you can email me, you can find me on Instagram, and I'm always here to help. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye.